Good evening guys, welcome to what will probably be the third attempt. Um, again, big, big, big apologies for this, it's just some technical issues what we had and hopefully now we can get sorted. It was just the picture was coming up, uh, Laura could hear and see me but the picture was frozen. Um, so now Laura switched to her phone so hopefully we can be successful in this chat. Uh, just waiting for Laura's um, request to join. If I can't get her on to, as a viewer and adder. So, fingers crossed, guys. Uh, I'll say the same thing again. Um, obviously, I've, if you've got any questions that you want to ask Laura, just pop it in the chat. You know, anything from who her favourite match was against or just you. Put anything you want. <laughs> I'm rambling now. <laughs> but I'm just uh, trying to fill the space whilst we uh, get started. As I say, guys, I've got Gary Thompson on um, tomorrow evening from 8pm again. So I'm um, really looking forward to that one. Obviously, he's an, a legend of the game. A legend of Yorkshire darts as well. Um like to thank everyone for jumping on um, and supporting these. I'll put that one in there, Jess. Thank you. Oh, if I answer the question, man, it's double ten. See, I know I can seem to it right now. Try and sort these issues out. Um. As I say, guys, I've been really appreciative of the feedback I've been receiving off these videos. Here, I'm going to add Laura. Hopefully it works. Learning the closest I've been to a nine, but he is the treble Nazi. Hi, Laura. Hi. <laughs> we got there in the end. Yeah. Hang on, I'll just try and prop my phone up. Technology, yeah. I know. It's a fine yeah. specimen. See what I can do with this. I've just been rambling for about five minutes or something. But luckily, I've got a gift of the gab, so. No, I've been here, I've been listening. How are you anyway? You okay? Yeah, good, thank you. You've uh, been having fun homeschooling, or have your kids been at school? No, I can't say it's been the most exciting few period of my uh, life, but uh, no, it's just got to be done, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, coming back, we'll, we'll start obviously with um, the interview, well, questions and what have you. I've said to people, if they've got any questions, um, they can pop it in the comments and I'll read them out to you if I haven't already asked you. But obviously, coming off the back of what would have been the um, Worlds for the ladies, is it a bit surreal not sort of having that time where you've probably, probably about now it would have been finished or maybe a couple of weeks ago? Is it a strange one for you? It is. I mean, I, fair, I've only been, played in the, I played at the Worlds twice. So, you know, for me, it was always like, it was the achievement of just qualifying and actually kind of feeling like I was getting to that point where I was playing better and kind of staying up the ranking. It's disappointing. Um, obviously, the points aren't being used. Um, so, it, yeah, it's disappointing. And... That, that whole run up and that excitement for me normally starts around October when you kind of know that it's the end of that season, you know you're in. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it's a shame, but it's one of those things, I guess, at the moment. But I suppose, obviously, you've filled Christmas with doing comms and doing, um, obviously, punditry and analysis at the PDC World Championships. How was that working in that environment, working the Worlds for the past two years? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I love it I have to say it's a whole different world that's opened up to me in terms of commentary and working with Sky Sports it's just, it's an amazing kind of well-oiled machine to be part of and uh, yeah totally totally love it um, under normal circumstances there's sometimes a practice board around where you could have a throw whilst you're kind of waiting between sessions obviously it can't happen at the moment with COVID protocols but ultimately, I was just pleased that it was on. I mean, Christmas is, Christmas is darts, and at least there were some darts on, even if I couldn't yeah. actually play anything, so. 
Um, obviously, it, uh, it's been great to see, obviously, yourself and Laura Woods. Has it been, was it sort of like, Nick, uh, Anthony Dundas, sorry, was describing walking to the lakeside as a referee, even as an, as an aura on the place. Is that the same with the Ali Pali? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's just, yeah, there's no crowds. Um, I mean, we've kind of come to expect it with everything that's gone on throughout 2020. So um, the crowds do really obviously make the atmosphere, but mm. still the palace itself, it was eerily silent, but it's still such a fantastic venue. And I think after the first night on the Tuesday, we had the crowds in and then yeah. change overnight with the stage, the kind of um, studio set up in the middle that absolutely, it, I don't think it, it came across really well on TV, but actually in the, in the arena, it looked absolutely fantastic. So. I think everyone's just doing the best they can and making the most of what they what we can at the minute. Yeah, if I was like I say on TV, it looked it looked awesome, and the obviously the PDC Nick Kenny was I had Nick Kenny on a couple of weeks ago, and he said just anything they do is so professional and so well run, and under the current obviously restrictions and what what have you, it's so adapts to that. It just shows the sort of the class of the PDC as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've been very quick to adapt. I think darts in its in its entirety has been very quick to adapt. Just yeah. you know, with the online stuff, I don't. I think there's opportunities that players have had throughout the whole time to to keep playing. But yeah, in terms of professional elite sport, what they've done to ensure that players could carry on, and that the adjustments they've had to make, obviously the additional expenses, COVID testing, and private hotels. I mean, it's been phenomenal and. Uh, I'm as much a, as a viewer as I am when I get to like comment, commentate and, and play. And it's just as a viewer, I'm just so excited that it carries on. Um, so, and I'm sure most people feel the same about it. Yeah. Um, obviously, the news this year was uh, the collapse of the BDO. What was your sort of feelings when you heard the news? Yeah, I think you think it's kind of been on the cards for quite you know, for a while. Um, it's it's definitely disappointing but off the back of it you've seen new new organizations stepping up you've got the UKDA taking on the county system obviously WDF have, have announced that they're you know they've, they've already announced the world masters with the potential world championships coming up at some point when when the world allows it and um, we've also got mad darts which I'm a part of as well so there's lots of other positives that have come off the back of it um obviously BDO was an institution and as a female player it was pretty much the only thing I felt that I had to go and play you know, at, at any competitive level. So yeah, very disappointing. But in the back on the back of it, hopefully the future's looking quite good once we can all get back out there and actually do yeah. it. <laughs> um obviously the this year as well also saw the inaugural ladies series. Oops, excuse me, sorry. Um I I asked Lorraine this question. Is it something you'd like to see like a regular sort of occurrence in the PDC calendar? Is it something you'd like to have as sort of like what the development tour is, pro tour, challenge tour, where it's you, you're playing for points and then eventually the points build up to a, maybe a PDC Ladies World Championships and sort of same setup as development tour where they play the final on the stage at an event? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the ultimate end goal would be, but I've said it before. I think, you know, the PDC look after different demographics. So you've got like, um, you've got the Asian tour now, you've got CDC in North America, you've got Australian tour, you've, as, as you've mentioned, you've got JDC uh, so, and um, development tour. So I, I feel personally, the women are kind of that only area. I know we can go to Q school, we can join the tour and try and progress that way. But actually, as, a, as an entity, uh, you know, I think it would be great to be, have a tour like you've mentioned um nothing over the top you know two three of those weekends throughout the year and then potentially with either the, the prize still being which is a massive prize two places at the world championships and the spot at the grand slam or you know a, a completely female centric tournament but um anything the pdc can do to just encourage and make darts you know female darts more visible i think is only going to be beneficial to, to the women's game as a whole and uh, obviously going back to when you played BDO. In sort of the BDO terms, you was to a lot of people who didn't really watch the game. You was uh, a. Your you husband <laughs> just asked what's for dinner tomorrow. <laughs> That's why right, I'll be having words in a minute. He can cook for himself for the rest of the week. <laughs> um, Tommy Johnson has just comment asked uh, best game you've commentated on. Oh God, there's been so so many. Um, 
you know what i'll always i won't say it's in one of my favorite games which happened to be the first one i ever did and that happened to be um Mikuru suzuki versus lorraine win stanley at the women's world championships finals um obviously i can't not mention fallon's game against uh, yeah i'll be able to say yeah fallon's yeah, Got Fallon's game obviously against uh, Tom Ev uh, Ted Everett, sorry, then going on to Mensa Sulovic, and you know, even when she lost to Chris Dobie, you know, they, they were magical, magical moments. But um, yeah, I think there's probably too many to mention, but uh, they, they definitely are standouts for me. Yeah, um, obviously, looking at your sort of video record, you've you've had quite a, a good few years, really. Obviously, you picked up the British Open and the Isle of Man Open, two big events really on the uh, BDO calendar, which for you was your favourite to win? Um, they were both quite good. It was nice to actually get some wins. Um, I, I haven't actually been on the tour dedicated, not, not for as long as a lot of the other female, you know, the other women players. Um, obviously the British classic was really good for me. Uh, you know, just the fact that I'd beaten Lisa Ashton. I think it was the first time I'd actually beaten her and beaten her in a final and winning my first major. And actually that also put me in, in the lakeside later yeah. that year. So, you know, the combination of those things was, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty, uh, that was a good feeling. <laughs> it's like I was saying to Lorraine uh, last night about obviously in the ladies sort of BDR, it's quite tough. It's quite tough. Um, Cause you could, you could rock up to a tournament and then you could end up drawing Anastasia or Dita or Trina in the first round. I mean, is that something you've sort of taken your stride or is it something where you just think, just give me an easy first round? Yeah, it, do, it does depend, I guess. Um, I think it kind of shows the value, especially if there's not many people in the competition. If you're in that top eight, you know you're going to miss those top eight players. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to miss a good player because, you know, actually there's a lot that aren't in the top eight that can equally, you know, bash me up week in, week out. Um, yeah, you do, you do, for me, a nice, you know, a first round draw to avoid one of those would be great. You've got to beat everyone at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, if you could kind of ease into a tournament, just settle down because, you know, we're traveling, you don't quite know how you're going to play. Your prep's not always brilliant. If you're coming at, you know, some competitions, you fly in in the morning and kind of dash to the venue. So yeah, but ultimately you've got to beat everyone. So just got to play what's in front of you. Obviously you mentioned about uh, Mad Darts and you've just been uh, appointed, I think it's Super Regional Director. Is that correct? It is, yeah. Quite a mouthful, but um, <laughs> just for those of you, for those that are watching and they don't know what the role of a super regional director, what's like a short summary of it? Yeah, so basically, what Mad Darts have done, they've divided the they've divided Scotland and Wales uh, into sixteen regions. Um, so I'm running one of those sixteen regions, and underneath me there's another sixteen regional directors. And essentially, it's really just trying to build up anyone that essentially anyone that hasn't got a pro tour card. Um, it's trying to offer different opportunities throughout the UK as it stands. I know that they've just um, announced a branch over in the Netherlands already that are joining the concept. Um, so we're talking about leagues. There's going to be mad points on offer for different uh, competitions. There'll be elite events. Um, I think I heard you mention Wayne Warren earlier. Um, you know, Wayne's obviously um, the uh, world champion in terms of the... Uh, belts so that there's lots of different things in between and my role really is to at the moment there's not a huge amount to do really it's recruiting some good people within the local areas good local knowledge to get some leagues on board um yeah and just just trying to push starts right the way from grassroots um i know they've got one of their tournaments is pub to pro and that's the kind of concept that you know you can build up and move throughout throughout you know how you can pursue your darting career as much as yeah. you want I mean, obviously, where we are, we've got Carl Self as the director of Holland. He's been trying to push it in other areas surrounding Holland. Some are just reluctant to push, and it's it's one of them really where it does seem quite a good um, quite a good opportunity really, but people don't seem want to seem to commit to it. I mean, at the moment, I can kind of understand any reluctance as well because of the kind of situation we're in. I do think it's you know. It's going to be one of those things that grows and develops once we start opening up and once people can actually see the best. Already we've got a couple of online tournaments. Okay, not where we want to be, but that is the situation we're in at the moment. So, you know, that's a great opportunity just for members and non-members to just play some competitive darts in the situation we're in. So, 
yeah but i do think there will be some leagues as you can appreciate that have you know, been run by the same people for 20 30 years might not understand the benefits straight away but hopefully as as we progress and as things start to come, become more normal as they people keep saying um you know there will the benefits will be obvious and people will sign up more and more uh, i'd seen i think it was an interview at some point last year where you were saying you, you'd entered a remote starts league and that you'd played players that you'd not had a chance to play before um so obviously what was that like for you and what who was you coming up against then uh I played obviously a few online ones. The specific the RDL league that we did that was um, actually Lorraine and it was run by Dean and Stanley and uh, Lorraine was in it as well. But yeah, um, I will drop in that my first game was against Darren Heroini and I beat him. So you know <laughs> that's quite a nice feeling. But just just people like Darren, you know, from New Zealand, you know, playing New Zealand, playing Australia, yeah. even on some of the online streams, or Jewish, um, just people that you don't bump into on a day to day basis. So um, yeah, it's just it's. The online concept has at least given us opportunities to kind of face against people you wouldn't normally get. Obviously, you've got your husband, Aaron, who's, who's a great player as well. He's a, uh, I believe, county air player and he's, he's done the tour as well. It must mm. be great to have a practice partner like Aaron to help bring your game up as well. Yeah, it is. If only you cook tea more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, if you're watching. <laughs> but no, no. Um, Absolutely, I've said it before. It's it's quite nice that I've actually got someone, you know, a physical presence to actually play against. And obviously, Aaron's a really, really good player. Um, so he's going on to Q school as well later, um, well, in, in February. So um, you know, fingers crossed for, for him as well doing that. But uh, yeah, no, it's been that's been quite nice. And my kids both play as well. So it's it, that's been quite nice getting them to play a few online tournaments and playing each other. That can be diff difficult. Uh, <laughs> We've had a few, we've had a few uh, arguments about clicking darts and making too much noise behind each other. But uh, yeah, oh, the, the tactics <laughs> are starting early. They're starting young. They're only nine and ten. <laughs> James Hurley just put, "What's it like having three darts the same, mate?" Oh, I know. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's, it is good. It, it's definitely the way forward, I guess. You know, I only spent sixteen years with an odd set of darts. <laughs> you was an odd set. I'm pretty sure in my first World Championships, I still had an odd dart. <laughs> I had two the same and one different. I can remember, I think, in one World Championships, I think it was uh, Justin Pope was playing, um, what was his name? Mark, it was, someone will correct me, it was a uh, ball chap, and he used to, he used to come out to uh, a Bad Manners song. But I remember him breaking a dart and the stem couldn't come out of the dart and I don't think he had a spare set on stage so he had to go off stage with this dart Justin Pope had to lend him a, a set of his okay. darts I think he ended up nearly beating him yeah I, I think I know who it is but uh, yeah um, it's, it was strange I lost one it, it, nothing, it was nothing more complicated than that and at a time that I wasn't touring or playing and I think I played my first game it was an England game it was a friendly it was my first kind of senior call up for a friendly game and I, I got, got to that level uh, yeah, Mark Walsh, James, who I was just put. Mark um, Walsh, cheers, James. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got to that point with an odd set and then kind of never changed it. But um, I'm lucky now. I've got a really good sponsor with Cosmo, Cosmo Darts, and they've actually looked at my original dart, that I, the, the two that were the same, looked at those and actually have had now created something which is suitable for me. Jimmy Lothorpe has asked if you have ever dropped a dart on purpose to annoy an opponent. wouldn't help me at 